Welcome to another episode of Ask the Physicist. Today's question is, why is Venus so bright? A physicist thought. Now, we've all been seeing Venus really bright, and I believe you're going to enjoy this because it kind of brings it into perspective as to why Venus is so bright. Venus is the second planet from the sun in the solar system. Since Earth is the third planet from the sun, Venus's orbit is right next to Earth's. Venus is also the planet that comes closest to Earth, as its orbit is closer to Earth's orbit than Mars' orbit, the fourth planet from the Sun. Figure 1 shows an image of Venus taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Venus has a dense atmosphere and is covered by clouds. By the way, one of the things that we ought to be asking NASA, ESA, all the rest, why no probes to Venus? Seriously, folks, why? It's the closest to us, would be the, probably the most cost-effective. The last probe to go to the planet Venus was the Japanese. The Russians were the last ones that actually dropped a probe on it. And here recently... It's been released that the, as we have reported, that there is what appears to be a permanent gravitational wave of some kind on the planet, and it covers the whole planet. There's a lot of strangeness about this one, folks. So let's continue. Now, it has been observed in recent months that Venus seems to be getting extremely bright. Seriously, it is. In fact, it is supposed to be getting brighter as it is right now getting closer to the Earth. Venus will be at its closest distance to the Earth between March 25th and March 28th, 2017. Figure 2 shows a solar system scope view of the solar system on March 27th, 2017, where it can be seen that Earth's and Venus's position are very close. It's extremely close. I mean, neighborhood-wise, you understand. But amateur astronomers from around the world are reporting that Venus is brighter than they have ever seen. Figure 3 shows below shows the relative size of the Moon and Venus from a Steve Olson and R. Wayne Steiger video, showing that Venus is much larger than expected. In fact, Venus seems to be about half the size of the full moon as indicated by the yellow line in figure 2 with about the same length as the diameter of Venus. So in figure 3 we see here a recent image of Venus and the moon in the sky. Now Steve and I actually showed this yesterday on the Steiger Olson report. Venus seems to be about half the size of the moon as indicated by the yellow line with the same length as Venus diameter in the image. So what should we expect in relative sizes of the moon and Venus to be? Well, the moon is about 27% of the size of Earth, while Venus is 95% size of the Earth. And I think that right there begins to show you uh, the dichotomy of, of size alone. The moon reflects 12% of the sunlight that falls on it, while Venus reflects 70%. Now, I didn't know that because of its heavy cloud cover. Also, the moon is roughly about 250,000 miles. Um, she does the math for us, while Venus at its closest distance to Earth will be about 38 million kilometers from the Earth. Now, we would expect the sizes to be inversely proportional to the two objects' distance from the Earth. Thus, to get the relative size between the two objects, we need to multiply the ratio of their sizes with the ratio of their respective reflective ability. Then, multiply by the inverse of their relative distance from the Earth. So, an equation for the expected ratio between the moon size and Venus would be the radius, and she goes ahead and does the math for us. I'm not the physicist. I'm just the commentator. <laughs> when R 
Half M is the apparent size of the moon, and R, V, is the apparent size of Venus. Okay, so we get that. So she gave us the equations, and we can see what it comes out to. So this simple calculation tells us that the moon should be about five times larger than Venus, but we see from figure three that the moon is only about twice the size. Also, this is when Venus has not yet reached its closest position to the Earth. Thus, we can conclude that indeed Venus is much brighter than expected. Now, why would this be happening? Well, Venus is a bit different from the other rocky planets in the solar system, as it does not produce its own magnetic field. I did not know that. And therefore, its own magnetosphere. The magnetosphere is a bubble produced by the planet's magnetic field. Physicist, there is a thought that in some ancient documents, and in fact the Thunderbolts project says this, that there are ancient writings that said that they saw Venus come in as a comet and then begin to have its orbit. Who knows? I just find this really interesting, folks. I did not know this. Well, let's continue. The magnetosphere is a bubble produced by the planet's magnetic field, which deflects the charged particles in the solar when, however, Venus has an induced magnetosphere, which is about 10 times smaller than Earth's magnetosphere. How odd! Venus' induced magnetosphere is caused by the solar wind particles ionizing its ionosphere and inducing a magnetic field as a result. This induced magnetic field isolates and partially protects Venus' lower atmosphere from the solar wind as it is able to deflect solar wind particles around the planet. The shape of Venus's induced magnetic field is shaped like a comet's tail. The name is appropriate because a comet develops a tail and coma in the same way through an electric charged exchange between the solar wind and the comet. Figure four illustrates the difference between Earth's magnetic sphere and Venus's magnetic sphere. Wow. All right, this is this flat out intriguing. What the hell is up with this? This is just outstanding. All right, so figure four, illustration of the difference between Earth's magnetosphere and Venus's induced magnetosphere that is like a comet's tail. Well, look at this. Let's continue. The fact that Venus does not produce its own magnetic field suggests that it does not have a hot liquid core inside that conducts electricity like the Earth has. Venus has a very dense and hot atmosphere, and there are lots of craters on its surfaces that have not eroded, and so look like they were recently created. It is believed that craters are caused by asteroid impacts, but according to the electric theory of the universe, craters are caused by electric discharges between charged objects passing close to each other. Comets have been found to have lots of these craters as well. Venus also rotates about its axis in the opposite direction of most planets. This suggests that Venus might not be a neutral solar system object, but rather a captured object. Yes, indeed. Since Venus has so many characteristics similar to comets, it is possible that Venus was at one time a comet that settled into a stable orbit within the solar system. I believe that, folks. Now, the fact that Venus is so much brighter than normal can be attributed to two possible factors. The first is that the ionization in Venus's ionosphere has greatly increased as a result of extra charged particles in the solar system due to the presence of extra stars, such as, for instance, several brown dwarf stars. In the 1960s, microwave radiation emitted from Venus's ionosphere were detected, and it is possible that the increasing ionization in recent years has led to the emission of visible light as well. Outstanding! Venus has lightning, even though it does not have much water. The lightning has to be caused by electrical discharges from the upper ionosphere atmosphere to the surface of the planet. The second factor is that Venus orbit may have been perturbated by an object passing close to it. Yes, thus it is 
possible that Venus's orbit is now even closer to Earth than before, which would potentially cause Venus to come much closer to Earth than it usually does. Then, if Venus comes so close to the Earth so that the two atmospheres almost touch, its history as a possible comet makes this event very likely to be very dangerous for our planet. It is not likely that the planets would collide because planets will eventually repel each other once they equalize their potentials. But the potentials are equalized through electrical discharges, and that would destroy much of the surface of the Earth, which would come littered with craters from the discharges. In conclusion, something is definitely happening to Venus. It could be increasing ionization of its ionosphere or a perturbated orbit that, has that is causing it to move closer to Earth. It is possible as well that Venus is experiencing both an increased ionization of its ionosphere and a, a perpetrated orbit. Perpetrated, I tell you, I love that. Wow, I don't know about you, but holy cow, Batman. Well, I want to thank our physicists. Thank you for an excellent, excellent paper. So if you have questions, please submit them to Steiger R. Wayne at gmail.com and we'll submit them. Um, this was probably just, they, they just keep getting better. All right, be kind to one another.